Hi guys, today I want to talk you through a colour pencil technique that creates a smooth and vibrant base and is very quick. And to do this I'll be using Prismacolor pencils and pastel matte paper. The reference photo I've chosen for this drawing is very vibrant, so it's important to me that I keep that vibrancy in the drawing. Before I get shading, I've already sketched out an outline. If you're unsure on how to do this, I've popped a link in the description with a couple of different methods you could try. All right, let's get on with the drawing. So the first thing I want to do is put down a rough base. I want to get a decent amount of pigment down on the paper, but it doesn't need to hide all of the little white spots that you can see through the paper. And because all of the eggs are different colors, I'm going to work through them one by one. So I'm starting on this orange egg on the left. And what I'm going to do is select five colors that I can see in the reference photo. To select them, I'm comparing them to my swatches that I have made for my Prismacolors. I have the set of 72 Prismacolors. So I'm going to select five shades that I can see. I'm picking a very, very light color first, which is on the very brightest parts of the egg. And then about three midtones, and I want one very dark. And I'm going to work through building them up bit by bit. The pastel matte paper is a little bit rough to draw on, but because of that, the color does go down very, very quickly and easily. It is leaving a lot of white spots, but that's fine because we will fix that in a little while. So I'm working from my lightest color to my darkest color, and then going back through and building up any of the lighter colors again as I need to. As I get towards the end of the orange egg, you can see how patchy it looks, but that's fine. It doesn't need to look smooth right now. We'll sort that out in a minute. So I'm going to move on to the egg next to it, the green egg. I'm drawing the eggs in the foreground first, and then I'm going to shade the eggs in the background after. So the green egg has a bit more of a marbled look to it, whereas the orange egg was much more smooth in its color. So to create that marbled look, I am building up again with a few different colors. I'm going to start off by adding a little bit of gray at the top because there is a reflection up there and then start building up some yellowy greens and some darker greens. And I'm looking at the reference photo and just trying to match the rough shapes I can see in the marbled effect. It doesn't need to be perfect and it doesn't need to be smooth. You can see at this point that it isn't looking particularly vibrant, but I do want it to look very vibrant at the end. So now I've done the green egg and the orange egg, I can draw the red egg behind it. Because of how I'll be blending this in a minute, I do want to make sure I get a decent amount of pigment, even though I'm not fully saturating the paper. If I don't get enough pigment down, then I won't be able to blend it. So the most time consuming part of this drawing was probably picking the colors. Because all of the eggs are different colors, they all needed to have separate colors selected. So I thought it'd be a good time to talk to you a little bit about how to make that easier. I so highly recommend swatching out your colors. And I do this as soon as I get a new set of pencils with new colors. So I've written out a chart for all of my Prisma colors and just drawn from light to dark on each color. That means that when I'm selecting the colors to draw these eggs, I can compare my swatch sheet to my reference photo and just pick out the few colors I can see. It'd be far, far harder to do this from just looking at the pack of pencils. And I honestly think it would feel a little bit overwhelming. Once I've selected those colors, I do like to always put a full base of the lightest color down, except for any areas where there is bright white, which you can see on the three eggs at the front. And then I just build it up layer by layer. Even though I'm going to be blending this, I still want to build up my layers. I'm onto the last egg now, and it's quite similar colors to the third egg I drew. And once I got all of those in, I can draw in the egg box. So the egg box is a mixture of purple, black, and a sort of pinky purple. The light is coming from the left, so I'm going to build up the left with the lightest color first and then start filling in some shadow on the right. For the darkest parts, I'm putting down a base of a dark purple and then I'm putting black on top of that. But it's all very, very basic shading. I'm not worrying about adding in any sort of detail at this point. I just want to end up with a nice smooth base that I can add details on top of. Okay, so I've got a base down on the whole drawing and it's looking very, very patchy and underwhelming. So this is the bit I really enjoy. I'm going to use Zestit to blend this together. 
Zesta is a solvent which is designed to blend colour pencils and I found it works really, really nicely on pastel matte. So I'm going to take a paintbrush, I'm going to put a decent amount of Zesta on the paintbrush but I don't want it dripping. And then I'm going to start off on the lightest areas. So I'm going to start on the lightest egg which is the yellow egg and I'm going to start on the lightest part of the lightest egg. And it's just a case of working in little circular motions, just blending it all together. It's so, so easy with the zest it. Do be careful to not put too much down towards the edges because it does tend to bleed if you do that. It's probably easiest to see on this pink egg at the back. I'm just starting in this top section where it's very, very light and working my way down into the shadows. And you can see how much more vibrant it's made the whole thing and how it looks so much smoother. I do recommend when you go from blending one color to another, a very different color, just wiping your paintbrush on some tissue is all I do. You could wash your paintbrush, but you would have to dry it properly because you wouldn't want to dilute the solvent. So you can see even clearer as I get down towards the egg box what a massive difference it makes. And again, I'm starting on the lightest areas and then blending into the darker areas. There were a couple of bits here where I didn't have quite as much pigment on the lighter areas as I wanted, but you can push some of the pigment around from the darker areas. So I sort of blended the darker into the lighter a little bit more to make it a little bit more vivid. So once I'm happy with my blending, I'm just going to leave it to dry for about 30 minutes so I know it is properly dry. And now I can go over the top and add some detail. The good thing about using something like Zesta is it is very easy to go over the top of it. So I'm using this in some areas to add some fine detail like around the edge where there's a bit of a shadow, quite a sharp line of a shadow. But I'm also adding sort of a glaze on some areas just to make the colour a little bit darker and add a little bit more shadow. Some of the eggs like this marbled green one has some fine little lines going through it. I do also want to lighten up some areas with this yellow color. And you can see that this does go over the top of the base we've made very, very well. The main areas I want to add to and build up a bit more is the egg box. The shadowed areas between the eggs, I want to be far, far darker. So I'm able to just build that up on top of my base and it looks far smoother and is easier to do than it was before I blended. So this whole drawing took about three hours, which was mostly because there's so many colors in here that I had to build up, but it would have taken far, far longer if I didn't use zest it to blend it. The last thing I'm going to do is add a few highlights around the edge of the box, which I'm just gonna do with the white pencil. And then that is it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a like and don't forget to click the subscribe and the notify bell so you never miss an art tutorial. Happy drawing guys, I'll see you in the next one.